What's going on guys, Billy here, and today I want to focus on the DJI Mini 2 as a video shooter's drone. For those of you looking to shoot photos with this drone, don't worry, I'm going to have a video posted tomorrow on the topic of how this drone would fit into a photographer's workflow, but because I primarily shoot video with the drones that I own, I figured this would be a really good starting point to talk about DJI's new Mini 2, their entry-level drone, and how it does at shooting cinematic video. So a great place to start when talking about how a camera performs is the specs. I showed you guys this same example exact screen in my previous video, my first flight video, and being able to shoot 4K video at a much higher bitrate, 100 megabits per second, makes all the difference, but when we're shooting video with a drone, there is so much more that's important than just how the camera performs. It's what holds the camera, it's the drone itself that is so crucial to shooting great aerial video, and luckily enough, this year round, a lot of great upgrades were made to the Mini 2. These are upgrades that make shooting better aerial video even easier. Now, some of these changes off the top of my head are the newly upgraded motors, the OcuSync 2 transmission system, as well as the newly designed remote controller, but I know you guys aren't here to just listen to me rattle off about this drone and why it's so great at shooting cinematic video. You're here for the test footage, so let's take a look at some clips I've shot with this drone over the past couple of weeks, and then we'll get into some of the specifics towards the end of the video. So everything here that you guys are watching is completely untouched. I haven't played with the exposure or the white balance or any of the colors at all. I should also note that I'm not using any ND filters here because the drone just dropped so any stuttering in the video could be from the fact that my shutter speed is cranked to compensate for the bright sunlight. Anyway, regarding the footage, I'm sure that you guys already have your opinion after watching these clips for a few seconds here, but all I can say is that I am flat out impressed. The colors, the contrast, the saturation, everything right out of the camera looks great and of course can be further tweaked in post. I think that the dynamic range is something that could be a little bit better, but we have to remember this is a $449 entry level sub 250 gram drone and quite frankly, if you told me that this footage came from the Mini 2, I don't think that I would believe you. To further comment on not only the quality of the video, but the fluidity of the video, the Mini 2's controls are rock solid. It's such a smooth drone to fly, and this sort of gets into the topic that I brought up regarding the drone itself, and that it is a really important component to shooting good aerial video. Everything from the top speed of 36 miles an hour, the advertised flight time of 31 minutes, the transmission system, OcuSync 2, the remote, I could keep going on here, but the point that I'm really trying to get at is that when you're flying this drone, you won't feel like it's just another beginner drone. There is room to grow on the Mini 2, and that's a huge change from what I thought about the original Mavic Mini. Now guys, as you may know, something that I love to do, especially when we're talking about example images, whether they be photos or videos, is provide you with a download link to view them in their full resolution and get around YouTube's compression. So if you're on your phone, you're on your tablet or computer, click the link in the description. It'll take you to a Google Drive folder, and you could download all of the video clips we watched here in today's video. The only thing I ask is you don't publish them as your own clips. Use them for, I'd say, educational purposes only. You can try editing them. You can try color grading them. You can see how they look on their computer. But again, don't publish them as your own. I hope you guys enjoy those video files. Let me know what you think of them down in the comment section below. Now, moving on to what I would say is the meat of this video. We're going to discuss some of the specifics as to why I love the Mini 2 so much as a video shooting drone. The first thing that I think makes the biggest difference here is the OcuSync 2 transmission system. You guys are watching a screen recording right now that I featured in my first first flight video, which if you guys haven't seen that video, I highly recommend you go check it out. I'm going to leave a link to my mini two playlist down in the description. Anyway, if you pay close attention to the distance in the bottom left hand side of the screen, you'll see that I am over 5,200 feet away. I am over a full mile away and the video signal is coming back crystal clear and there is no latency in my controls due to an increased distance. When you're trying to focus in and get that shot, whether it's a reveal, whether it's a rotation, whether you're chasing after a subject, whether it's a person, a car, a train, a boat, anything. The last thing that you need is a breakup in the signal. That video feed coming down to your controller, if that jumps, if it lags, if it totally cuts out, your video shot is ruined. At least for me, if I'm doing a rotation and then the video feed kind of jumps, I've got to totally start over because I just don't feel confident that I got a nice smooth shot. Now, the good thing with OxySync 2 is that you get a range of 6.21 miles or 10 kilometers, but it's not about the range for me with this drone. In fact, with the battery to power ratio, I don't think that you could even reach 6.21 miles and then turn around and come back. But 
when you're flying this drone close to you, whether it's a thousand feet or 5,000 feet away, you're going to get a nice crystal clear signal with no lag, no jumps, and you're going to nail that shot every time because you don't have to worry about any jumps in the signal. The next big change is these motors here, which are upgraded from the original Mavic Mini to provide a faster top speed of 36 miles an hour, opposed to 31 miles an hour, and increases the wind resistance rating to a scale five, which means this drone can handle wind gusts from 19 miles an hour to 23.5 miles an hour. And from what I've found, in my own flying, it can probably hang with gusts that are even higher than this rating. These upgraded motors mean that the performance is going to be all around better in the Mini 2 than its predecessor in the original Mavic Mini. This means a faster top speed, it means a higher wind resistance rating, and also means that the drone is going to be more agile. At least that's what I found. It feels more responsive to my stick input, and that's something you definitely want when you're trying to shoot good aerial video. Now, I'm going to take a deeper dive into these motors, because you might be wondering, if they upgraded the motors, where did they shoot? shave the weight from from the other components. Of course, they want the Mavic Mini, the Mini 2, to be as light as possible, 249 grams, and they did it in the battery. Now, I've got to thank Russ from 51 Drones for bringing this up in his video. I wanted to share this information with you guys and kind of take a little bit of a deeper dive here. So the Mini 2 battery is a LiPo battery. It's got 2,250 milliamp hours as its capacity, while the older Mavic Mini battery has a Lion battery, and it's got a capacity of 2,400 milliamp hours. So this can store more power, but with the newer battery being lighter, you've actually got a longer flight time in 31 minutes. Now I've come to the assumption that with this battery, because it's both lighter and because it powers more efficient motors, you're gonna get that higher flight time, and you're also gonna get a more agile drone. So the upgraded motors and the smaller battery is actually a really good thing. The final change made here that equates to better video from this drone is the controller. I have raved about this remote for months because it's what came with the Mavic Air 2 and it's all around a more ergonomic design. The foldable remote may have been easier to travel with, but this is by far easier to hold, which makes precise flying a whole lot easier. The design of a remote controller might be a little bit more subjective just because some people might like one design over another. Some people might find that one controller is more comfortable to hold than another, but everything else I went over in this video is fact. All of these upgrades that come to the Mini 2 make it an overall better video shooting drone from top to bottom. Now, before we wrap this video up, I do want to throw in one more tidbit here that makes this drone, the Mini 2, a great video shooting drone, and it's the customizable gimbal and yaw settings. This means that you can change how fast and how smooth the gimbal moves, but you can also change how fast and how smooth the drone rotates for each individual flight mode. Pushing these numbers down to make the rotation even smoother has given me the ability to really dial in how my drone flies to get the smoothest video possible. Alrighty, you guys, so that about does it for me today. I hope that you enjoyed the video. I guess we can finally answer the question, does the Mini 2 shoot cinematic video? And the answer is, of course, yes. You guys probably already knew that from the start of this video, but I had to think of a title, and I guess you could kind of think of this whole entire topic more of, like, how does the Mini 2 do shooting video? Is it a good video drone? Is it a bad video drone? And of course, it's a great video drone, especially for the price and the category that it slots in at. I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to take a look at the download link in the description, view those files for yourself, and also let me know what you think of the Mini 2 as a video shooting drone. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace!